This is Joshua Spodek, author of the book Initiative. I'm here with Dan Zaner, who found me online and read and did the exercises of the book. Dan, first, thank you for being here. Hey, thanks for having me, Josh. Uh, got my copy well worn and used. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and here and slightly coffee stained, but you know, it goes everywhere. I wonder, if, I wonder if you could walk us through what led you to find the book, what led you to do to, now there's reading the book, which most people do, and there's doing the exercises in the book, which is a significantly bigger thing to do than simply reading it. So what led you to read it? What led you to do the exercises? Yeah, Where were you in life? Read it was, um, I can't remember how I found you now initially. Um, I, I think I saw, uh, I think it was your, your article about the, the daily burpees and then reached out to you was like, hey, you sound like a really good guy to be on my, my podcast about adventure and the importance of that in our lives. And then we ended up having this really deep discussion about leadership and taking initiative and starting new things. And I was like, that sounds like something I really need to improve my skills in. And I've been doing a lot of studying with a now mutual friend of ours, Larry Yatch, a retired Navy SEAL, and learning all about tactical planning and, and how to do planning and things and how to build teams. But the material and initiative that you talked about seemed to go really well with that and complemented really well. Well, yeah, I'll give it, I'll give it a try because I was wanting to make some changes in how I um, approached my, my business of adventure. So that's, that's really what got me into it. Did you know how much you're going to get? There's two things about the exercises. There's how much time you put into it and how much you get out of it. Because the exercises you could do very quickly, but you did, you, what, you delved into it more. Did you know, is that about, is that accurate? And if so, <laughs> did you know what was going to come out? I, I had no idea. Well, I had a little idea of what I thought I wanted to come out of it. Like I thought I wanted to create a, a course and a mastermind group and you know, all the, all the things. Right. And I've ended up actually doing less, but better things. <laughs> less, but better. Okay. <laughs> Which has been really fulfilling and freeing to like, it, it's given me permission to quit things that aren't effective for me and not feel bad about having invested time in them because I've gotten something out of everything that I've, I've done and, ah, and so, built relationships more importantly out of, out of all those things. Oh, so much to go on there. Uh, now I was going to ask you a different question, but can you tell me about the relationships? How, what kind of relationships that are form and how, and how does that connect with exercises that you read in a book? Yeah. So <laughs> it's been really cool. Like coming to, you know, one of the principles that you talk about in the book is you know, pitch and they'll judge, ask advice and they'll help. And so asking advice of people that I found on, you know, through my podcast before or reached out to since then, as I went through the exercises and went deeper into this area of interest, they've become friends because I asked for advice on a problem that we both care about and we're both passionate about solving. And I'm not in competition with them in any way. I'm trying to solve a different part of the problem than they are, and they're happy to help me. And you know, guys, especially um, two that come to mind, Jeff Bonaldi and Shannon Stowell, um, who Jeff introduced me to as part of <laughs> these exercises. One, one of the things that you prompt us to, in, to do in the book is, who else can you introduce me to to help me get, get some more advice? And Jeff was like, you need to talk to my buddy Shannon. So Jeff, um, he runs a company that does adventure expeditions with a societal justice purpose. And Shannon, he introduced me to, is, is actually the president and CEO of the Adventure Travel Trade Association, who I never thought I would have been able to talk to, let alone form a, a, a really genuine friendship with. And, and I talk to these guys at least once a month now um, as part of my, you know, just friendship circle, but also advisory group on, on this initiative. I, this is... Is it fair to say, this is almost touching to hear. Yeah. I mean, it, it, is this life-changing? It, it has been life-changing in a way that I didn't expect of, you know, I've always been very good at connecting with people, but this gave me a much better set of tools to connect. And I, I'm, I'm very much an idea guy. I come up with ideas all the time, but I get very guilty about, not being able to act on all of them. And 
like this principle, the idea of a lifetime comes once a month, gave me freedom to be okay with not finishing some of these ideas because it's either not the right time or it's not actually going to solve the problem that I want to solve or it's not going to solve it in the way that I want to solve problems. It's going to have too many other associated costs that I'm not willing to pay. Um, it's been really freeing of obligations and commitments that aren't ultimately helpful and has built, help, helped me build some deeper relationships with people I already knew, um, but also some, some new friends. It's, it's been really great. The way I describe it is you said that you've quit some things that weren't as important. And to me, it, it, and tell me if this is consistent with how it's been for you, is that you, it, it helps you develop your sense of priorities and the things that are not the top priorities, if they're holding you back from reaching your full potential on those things, you realize that and you don't, it's, it's like, you know, when you have kids, you stop doing this stupid stuff after work because your kids are worth much more. Yeah. And it's not that you don't want to do the stupid stuff. Well, you didn't think it was stupid at the time, but it just does not measure up. Yeah, it doesn't serve you your, anymore. Is it like that? Is it, I, it's not that yeah. you're quitting things. It's that you're just saying, that's not, I'm glad that got me here, but that's not, what, that's not helping me now and not nearly as much as this other thing. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Case in point, like putting out my, my regular weekly podcast I enjoyed it. It served me for a while. It, it built some, some really great connections and people, people enjoyed listening to it, but ultimately it wasn't solving the problem that I want to solve, which was encouraging, especially men to embrace a life full of adventure and, and perseverance and challenge. <clears throat> and it wasn't doing that. And so I quit it. I, I've, I put together another short second season and I have no plans yet to start it back up um, until it becomes apparent again that I should invest time in it. And what do you, what is that giving you? What has it given you time for or resources for? It's What's given me time to uh, now that I can talk about it, actually um, one of our good friends and I haven't told you about this yet either. So Larry Atch, um, part of the clarity that I was able to bring around adventure was telling him my passion for this area of adventure and wanting to bring people into experiences that will change their lives. And like, why don't we do that together? Like, mm -hmm. how's this, you know, I remember this conversation really well, I was standing in my kitchen and he's, we were talking on the phone and he's like, how's this having three jobs and a side hustle thing working out for you? <laughs> <laughs> so I was spending all this time and energy and money and like investing in my brand and my business and like it wasn't getting me much of anywhere but tired and I'm sorry to interrupt and was that this kind of stuff when you go into online marketing they're like buy this product and it'll you know you'll get all these uh people on your mailing list and stuff like that like the yeah all those things and I was trying look to look like it was something like that was yeah this book where you like oh yet another one of those things no it didn't it was um because I'm, I'm in that, that world a lot and this didn't seem like that. Mm -hmm. It was, it was different. And it, I mean, it very much follows fundamental principles that I, you know, I've, I've seen before, but in, in a, in a good format of, you know, it's, it's market validation spelled out really, really well, but in, in more of a lens of focusing on relationships and solving real problems that may not necessarily mean starting your own business, which I really like as a very risk averse guy, <laughs> Mm -hmm. Funnily enough, I'm, I'm, I'm adventure Dan, but I don't like risk. <laughs> like starting my own business, um, like makes me ill actually. Um, because I, I just don't have experience there yet. I don't have confidence that I can do it. And it stops me from doing a lot of the things that you need to be successful in starting your own business, like spending money on marketing. <laughs> and I just didn't do those things and go figure my business didn't go anywhere. Um, and so this was much more freeing in terms of like, as you go through this process, you may end up starting a business, but you'll be confident in having the, the tools, the skills, the network, the resources to do it well, and that it will be profitable because you've done the numbers. <laughs> and since you, oh yeah, the numbers. They, like yeah, which exercise. stopped me for like four months <laughs> because I couldn't get the numbers to work how I needed them to. I'll ask you a very basic question. All right. Um, 
how much did you pay for the book? And then since then, how much have you spent in time and money on the exercises that you've done? Oh, geez. I mean, so I spent 17 bucks on the book. Um, time. Hmm. And have you spent on anything on the exercises since then? I think the only thing I spent on the exercises since then, I'll show you because it's, it's right here and cool. When I was validating the concept of, of getting a group of guys together and teaching each other how to do survival skills with a survival kit, I got one of these, What's which that? I wanted anyway, and it's cool. It's, it's called a vessel. It's an aluminum tube with a flashlight on one end, on one cap, and oh. the other cap is a compass, an oil-filled compass that won't freeze. And then inside are a bunch of tins of survival gear. Like this one's a wire saw. Okay. So it's kind of like a, a, a different kind of Swiss Army knife. Fire starter kit, things like that. And I had part of my, con, one of my solutions to the problem was, oh yeah, I'll get this group of guys together and, and I'll do a membership. And then, you know, this will be part of the welcome kit where you get one of these. And then each guy will pick a, a tool out of the kit and we'll teach them to each other. And then we'll go on a, a survival night, uh, overnight survival trip. <clears throat> and so I bought this, it was like 70 bucks or something on, on eBay. And I tested it out and I asked some of my guys that I, I, I thought were my, my target market for this. And they're like, why in the hell would I pay 150 bucks for a survival kit? I don't want that. <laughs> so that's all. So you spent 70 bucks and that's yeah. all you spent after buying the book. Right. And, and was, I've used and this, I've used the hell out of this and it's been amazing. Like I would have bought it anyway. So um, it gave me an excuse to buy it and, you know, pay for it out of my business checking account. So it was, you know, it gave, it gave me purpose to, you know, buy adventure gear that I wanted anyway to test out this concept and validate okay. that, yep, that's not going to work. And so um, someone can get the benefits that you got without paying anything after they get the book. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and if you do spend money, it's going to be for a, a good reason to test something very specific. Okay, so um, let's go back. What was, what did initiative mean to you before? What does it mean to you now? How is it, what's changed? And yeah, bef changed? before it was like, initiative was like, you have to have initiative, you know, it's a character trait. Like, you know, you gotta, you gotta have moxie, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But now it's, it's, it's a, an initiative is a, a way of, solving problems that you care about in a methodical manner that build relationships. And so I'm reading that you know how to do it. It's like if it's as if you just told me, um, uh, like something around the house is it works this way. And this is how like a pressure cooker or blender is something that blends things. And this is how you use it. You press this button to get that result. You press that button to do that result. And it sounds like I'm reading that initiative, went from being this thing that either you have or you don't to something that is a methodical step-by-step -step process. If you do it, you get the results that you were looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very much. So it's, it's, it's it, actually, now that I think about it, it's, it's like fixed versus growth mindset. It's, it's helped me have a very much more growth mindset orientation around this concept of initiative and starting things and leading things of it's not a character trait. It's based on time and situation. Like given, given a situation where a problem exists and that I have, I'm at the right, the right time to uh, act on a particular idea, I can take initiative on it. And those ideas are going to come around all the time. Mm -hmm. and, and some of them are going to be worth acting on given the, what exists in the rest of the environment and my network and some aren't. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. So who is this useful for? Who is this not useful for? It's extremely useful for scatterbrained people with a lot of <laughs> ideas like me. <laughs> like if you tend to have a like, oh man, I want to do this. And then when you're in the process of doing that, oh, I want to do this. Like this is really helpful for you because now actually, so great example, even in the process of finishing out the current initiative I'm on, um, got a new idea that I, I wanted to explore to see if it was worth doing. And I started going through the process again and found out that it was not worth pursuing it <laughs> myself, not leading. And, and I was able to articulate that really well. Like, Hey, 
this is this is the problem we're trying to solve. This is a potential solution. Do you have any advice? They gave some advice. They gave some really great advice. I'm like, awesome. I'm not the person to act on this advice, but let's find someone who can. Mm -hmm. So tell me about priorities. Yeah, it, it really helped um, keep the main thing, the main thing, like my, like you said, my family, I've got, I've got a, a wife that I dearly love. We've been married for 10 years. We've got three beautiful children that I love spending time with. Um, this is why I do what I do. And I don't, um, this has helped me cut down on the amount of things that take time and focus and attention away from that. Like building furniture to sell to clients in my wood shop, like I used to, or, um, you know, having a lot of, uh, evening time editing podcasts or writing blog posts or, or, or whatever, you know, I don't, I don't do that as much anymore. Like when I'm doing something along this initiative, I involve my family. And if I can't, I find a time where they're not, um, we're not together anyway and I'll, and I'll do it. Like case in point <laughs> to help further like solve this this problem showing that you know with a wife and three kids and a day job and a mortgage you can and should embrace adventure we sold my wife's car and for no more money than we sold it for we bought a used land rover discovery mm -hmm. which has already enabled us to just like hey let's find every gravel road we can in our county and drive drive down them and see what's there uh -huh. not that we couldn't have done that before with our volvo but it just looks cooler in a land rover but uh -huh. <laughs> and you know, I, I, I took this picture that I'm actually really proud of because, because of this mindset that I'm now in of wanting to lead others into a life of adventure and not breaking the bank doing it. Like I ended up taking a really amazing picture, just the front of the, of the car at right the right time of day for right lighting. And I wouldn't have been in that moment if I hadn't been in this mindset of of taking initiative. It sounds like you, I, I think a lot of people think if I act, it's going to be yet another thing that I have, like I'm already busy and now you want me to do yet more. I don't have time for another thing. You it, have had a different experience and you're not. Yeah. Involved. It is an upfront investment of time. Of what that pays of, off. Like how much time? So like the, the, the first few exercises, like the, the personal essay, it took me a couple hours to write. Um, I mean, and, the uh, something something through now. I'm just kind of thinking. the The problems didn't take hardly any time. Each one, up until the numbers. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's exercise seven, if I remember right. The, yeah, uh, didn't take all that long. Like the the interviews, you know, it was people I was having lunch with anyway. The the you know close contacts for the most part, friends and family members, same thing. Um, you know, just kind of reaching out and maybe having a half an hour or an hour conversation. So five to 10 hours um, for each of those. The people closer to my field, that took a little bit longer to just find a way to get a hold of some of these people. Um, so that probably took closer to 15 to, to 20 hours. But it was, it was enjoyable. Like I got to actually call um, Bear Grylls Survival School and talk to his... Um, location scout his his executive producer and we had a we had probably a 45 minute long conversation and it was awesome it was like i never thought i'd be able to talk to this guy <laughs> so it wasn't it wasn't like i felt burdened by the time it was we're, so fun we're, we're almost certainly going to get disconnected and I'll, if, if we do I'll, I'll reconnect in a second yeah okay and we'll so yeah a lot of them were, were really fun and then i got to the wall of financials like i mean you say, you say it right in right in the book of like well, well this is this is where it gets real and it did very quickly and it stopped me dead in my tracks for a couple of months <laughs> but it was good because it kept me from driving off of a cliff which was exactly where i was heading <laughs> you started doing the the financials yeah i so <laughs> At the time, it felt like I hit a brick wall, but now I realize it was a parachute. <laughs> it kept me from it. It kept me, you know, so it's not the fall that kills you, right? It's the sudden stop at the end. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, the parachute of the financials 
exercise arrested my rate of descent into oblivion and, and made me really think about, oh, this is actually not going to work the way that I have it laid out. Mm -hmm. And if I continue down this path, I'm going to lead to myself getting burnt out and frustrated and not solving this problem at all. And I need to take things slower, which is what happened. And it was great and led to me getting a job offer by one of my mentors. And what you're describing sounds like for someone from the outside, uh, you're talking about particulars of your life, but the book doesn't know about your life. No. And anyone who goes through, would it work for them too? Yeah, I mean, you, you may be a better business person than I am and come up with a great, great idea that will work financially the first time and you'll sail right through. Awesome. Um, you may end up getting extremely frustrated and curse a lot like I did at a spreadsheet. Awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it will be extremely effective for you. Um, or maybe somewhere in between where you do some iterations and, and come out the other side with a, a business plan that you go on with. Or in my case, you put together a business plan that you get then give to a friend to incorporate into their company. How did you like the quote? One of the quotes I have in there is from the, the fashion model who took my course. Did that help you? Because I, I tried to pick someone. Everyone loves this exercise after they start doing it. And everyone's scared before they start doing it. <laughs> did it help you? Because I don't think most people associate fashion models with doing spreadsheets. Yeah, I'm trying to find it again because it was really good. Um, yeah, it, I like spreadsheets. I'm an engineer, you know, uh -huh. it, but yeah, you, I mean, you don't have to enjoy spreadsheets at the beginning. To, I mean, you could put this on a really nice uh, notebook or whatever, you know, you can, you can do it a lot of different ways. Um, but uh, it, it made things very clear in a way that, you know, my previous um, things, uh, attempts at business plans and things like that um, weren't freeing. Like, um, it was, like none of, these, none of these numbers are written in stone. Like you can change any of them and then just figure out how to have reality match up with that. It was, was it fun? I mean, this is what people keep coming back to me and they're saying the numbers doing the financials is actually fun. It got to be fun after, after I beat my head against the wall a bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like once I stopped trying to force it, it got fun. All right, I want to, I want to leave the financials and I want to go back to yeah. something before. Um, uh, you said that it's great for so people who are, um, I read shiny objects like, oh, this oh, is yeah. shiny, that's shiny. What about people who have no ideas? Oh, this would be great too, because there are things that, you're, that you care about. Most, most people have something they care about. I'm, I'm thinking of like the apathetic teenager sitting on their parents' couch like, oh, I don't really want to do anything in life. Even those kind of people have something that are like, when pressed, you can think about something that you you want to change in the world or in your world. Even if it's just, you want to lay on your couch and play video games more. Awesome. Let's figure out how to do that. <laughs> so it would be this will help you do that. <laughs> that sounds crazy. I mean, can you go into, can you describe that more? Yeah. I, I, it so doesn't sound crazy to me, but I could imagine it sounds crazy to others. It, it is, um, it's, a, it's a system that is strategy and, and tactic agnostic, if that makes sense. Like, the, the environment that this helps you create isn't one necessarily that involves creating your own business or, or, or whatever, but it's, it will help you discover how to talk, talk about what you care about and build a network of support to actually influence that. Like so many of us these days are like, you see on the news or if you watch the news, which you shouldn't, but if you do, or you're on Facebook or something, you're like, oh, what am I going to do about uh, domestic violence or the environment or the, you know, the wildfires in Australia or global warming or the sex trade or what, you know, whatever the, the problem du jour is that affects you deeply, go there, you know? And, and you, this is actually kind of interesting of like, it would be a really good test. The next time you're on Facebook or Instagram or however you consume your news media, um, 
whatever really tugs at your heart and makes you feel disgusting, write about that. Like, why does that make you feel so terrible? Why does that affect you so much? And what would it feel like to actually solve some part of that? Like legitimately own part of that solution. And are you saying that's something you would like to do or instead of, instead of doing initiative? No, and then put that into the initiative process. Like that then becomes part of your personal essay. That is your area of interest because it so, is. A so there are like things if, in the world. Like if you, if you can't think of something that you want to go pursue, that's a way to get some ideas of, you know, tricking your subconscious, right? Use it to your advantage. It already knows what you care about deeply, even if you consciously don't. And so you can trick yourself and put yourself in an environment where you're going to get triggered by something. And when you're triggered, say, ah, that made me feel horrible. Let's dive into that problem so that I care about. I'm reading from you as saying that if, if you are someone who doesn't really have, who feels like I don't have a passion, I don't know what I would do, then you would say read initiative and then you'll find yourself and then put yourself in a situation where you'll get some heightened emotion and there you go. That's going to be what you can act on. Bingo. Yep. So what if someone's sitting there thinking, yeah, but really, I don't. Really, it's not going to work for me. If it could work for me, it could work for anybody. I mean, goodness, <laughs> I've tried. And I, I, I've only tried and failed at a few things. And if that doesn't say uh, at something, I don't know what will. Like, I don't tend to try things that are risky. I don't tend to try new things. I'm pretty kind of predictable career path kind of guy until recently. And this has helped me see like, oh, I actually can and should pursue what lights me up. What I'm passionate about and discovering that is important and worthwhile. That sounds pretty universal to me. Yeah. Because really, you know, there's a really great quote that I sent somebody. Um, actually, I'll pull it up here. Jeff Benaldi, actually, uh, I, I posted it on Instagram and he, he sent me it back in a DM like, this is amazing. Um, no coincidence, this was, this was literally just yesterday. Um, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Howard Thurman. That is what the initiative process helps you do is find out what makes you come alive and go do that. Systematically. Effective. Systematically. Yeah. And with a network of support. I mean, you're fairly available to people who are, are trusting the process and doing it. And there's a network of people who have gone through the process that I'm sure even if you didn't have the capacity to help someone directly, you could point them to. Um, and you know, you build a network of support by doing the work along the way so that you're, you're not alone in the process. It's not like, uh, it's not like going through, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of Tim Ferriss, huge respect for him. Um, but like reading through his stuff overwhelms me. It's, it's all this here. I did this awesome thing. You could implement it if you want, but there's nobody here to help you <laughs> other than this podcast episode and this seemingly unattainable person that I interviewed, which I now know are really not all that unattainable. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I wouldn't have had that mindset without going through this process. I want to ask you one last question about initiative, the process. And then I want to ask you to talk about what your project is and who Larry Yatch is and what your relationship with, like, with him is. So back to initiative, you don't have to be on this call with me. What, why are you sharing this? What do you, what do you want to get out of this call? Yeah. I mean, well, we, video? we've built a, a really good connection and, and every, every time we get, we talk, I find my, my life gets a bit better. And so I like being around people like you who change my thinking, who are, you know, outside of my, my normal experience, but have, have done things in a way that I want to emulate in some way, if that makes sense. Um, and so it, it, I've recommended this book to so many people 
who are like, oh, I don't know what I want to do, or I don't know how to get started, that I want to help more people do that. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, a couple of things, just our, our, our connection, but also I, I really believe in this process. Glad to hear. I mean, this is very, uh, I feel honored and very flattered and, uh, and also very gratified. Like, and this is what I was hoping. This is what I wanted to get out of it is for people to, who, you know, for various reasons, you know, the first couple chapters in the book are like, why so many resources that are out there that so they, they purport to help people to take initiative and be entrepreneurs and, and get ahead in their careers actually often get the opposite result. Yeah. And it killed me that, you know, things like Shark Tank and our educational system and media often make it seem like this is so, any, anyone can do it and they leave you hanging dry, high, high and dry. Mm-hmm. And yet the people who succeed, it's so, I'm not saying it's easy in the sense of, of it doesn't take any work, it doesn't take any attention, but it is a matter of if you simply go and do it, you will get the results. But most people don't know specifically what to do. Yeah. If you give them specifically what to do, you know, and sometimes at the beginning, if someone learns how to play piano, you say, put this finger on that key, this finger on that key, this finger on that key. It sounds so um, the opposite of playing your heart out in Carnegie Hall stage. And yet that's what leads to it. Yeah. And I wanted to give people, you know, basic training, the equivalent of here are the fundamental skills. That if you have them, it gives you wings in the way that I hear you describing. Yeah. And actually to use some distinctions from our friend Larry, who I'll give some background in a minute. This, is, this follows the, this model of building power and, and illustrating control. So power being the ability to influence change. You got to learn something after you've identified a gap you want to close. You got to learn something and then practice it and then gain experience. And so uh, practice being repeated failures in an environment where there is zero risk of failure or consequence, zero consequence to your failure. And then gain experience by increasing the risk in your practice. And then by illustrating control over that learning, you gain knowledge. By illustrating control over that practice, you gain skills. And by illustrating control over that experience, you gain confidence. That's what this book does. It, it helps you identify a gap in your, in your life or the world that you want to fill. You learn some things to, to fill that gap. You illustrate that knowledge by talking to people about it and, and saying, hey, this is what I learned. And does that make sense to you? Do you feel that, that way? And then you, you are able to, to practice solving that problem by going through these iterations of, of problem solution pairs and, you know, with friends and family that care about you and love you and want you to succeed and and aren't the guys on shark tank, you know, or some pitch competition somewhere that wants nothing more than to shoot you down in front of a bunch of other people. You're, you have a very safe environment to fail over and over and over and over again. And by doing that, you're, systematically introducing risk the further along you get to in the book to gain experience and then now at the end of end of it you, the process you've been able to have been able to exercise control over that experience and gain confidence like yeah i can do that i have done that i will do that more now tell me what was the context of what what was the problem you wanted to solve uh actually people can go and read you have posted online your the exercises, the results of the exercises, as well as your reflections of doing them. So let's start with that. If, if people want to get the, the lowdown, what page should they go to and what should they read? Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's the anthem of the adventurer.com. Um, and then you can read my blog on there. Um, I am in the process of writing the second personal essay, which actually might just end up being a transcript of this conversation <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> or most of it. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's all the, all there. Uh, I think the only thing I didn't share specifically was financials, but I mean, if you want them, I'll send them to you. That's not really, it, I just didn't find it all that interesting to people to share. And at the time I was not able to share them publicly, but now I, I probably could. So anyway, yeah, you can go there. So um, what was the problem that, that was getting you that you wanted to solve? What was, what's the solution now? Maybe, maybe an earlier iteration too. And who are you now? How is that? What, is, what has that made you? Yeah, the problem I wanted to solve, and, and it hasn't changed a ton, is um, we just don't have enough adventure in our lives, especially as men. 
Um, and it's, it's a core need for us. So we, we need to have these experiences where we learn by persevering into the unknown and finding fulfillment. And, and we use these excuses of, oh, I, you know, my wife won't let me, or oh, I've got kids, or I've got a day job that is restrictive, or I don't have enough money. And they're all bull crap. And it leaves us, and this is where, it cha where I, I changed from my original problem to incorporating really how people feel af after talking to some friends, is I mean, this leaves us feeling trapped in life. It leaves us feeling empty. And like we're, one guy said, I, I love this, I look forward to going to bed at night more than I do waking up in the morning. Oof, uh -huh. How terrible is that, right? And, and it comes from this lack of adventure and, and on a spectrum casual low risk stuff to epic high risk stuff. And that doesn't necessarily mean climbing Everest or anything like anyway. So that that's the problem. And the solution has turned into um, a mix of learning how to lead a group of men without spending any money on it locally, just guys that I've become friends with and giving them the, some structure. So we meet every Saturday morning, we put on rucksacks with steel plates in them and we ruck to Dunkin' Donuts and back and we talk about life. And uh, when it's a little bit lighter out in the evening, we're, we're gonna switch back to our uh, Wednesday night routine. We go over to a Boy Scout camp that some friends of mine manage. We get a group of us together and we hike the trails with our rucksacks or we throw around some logs or we do circuit workouts in the creek or you know, we've got other adventures we want to plan. And all I'm doing is providing a little bit of structure um, from some of the, the mentors that I've met along the way of this initiative process. So that's- and Is that like that video? One of your posts had a video, a Girl Rock video. Is it like, is it, are you doing stuff like that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so people should go watch that video. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, there's a, there's a really good video of, uh, uh, I think it's me and my friend Promet um, in, a, in a creek bed doing uh, lunges and, planks and stuff. I ended up like embedding a, embedding a rock in my hand from planking for 10 minutes with 30 pounds of steel on my back. It was great. Um, but I, the satisfaction from doing that and has just been amazing. Like I have one of our guys, um, his name is Stefan. He's our videographer. Actually, we have a videographer um, that just wants to be around this group and uh -huh. I'm, I'm not paying him or anything, but he told me once like, he actually, he wants to film an adventure film with me just because of this environment that I've created. And uh, he's like, he was like, thank you so much for putting this together because otherwise I wouldn't do it. He's now, um, I don't know if, if you've heard of Andy Frisella, his uh, program 75 hard, um, 75 days, you follow a diet, you do two workouts a day of at least 45 minutes. One of them has to be outdoors. Uh, you have to read 10 pages of a book a day. I can't remember what else. I think you have to take a picture of yourself in front of a mirror with your shirt off to like track your physical progress. Anyway, it seems simple. It's not. I haven't done it yet, but Stefan is, and he's, he's taking his own initiative now based off of what we started together. Um, and so seeing that just come out of the structure has been extremely gratifying. So that's kind of one part of this, of the ultimate solution is just, not putting any pressure on building a business around it and just letting adventure kind of lead the way. And I think you're about to be disconnected here. Um, hold that thought. Right, plug into a power outlet anyway. Hey, sorry, my fault. Hold that thought. I've got to plug in my laptop anyway. <clears throat> okay so yeah so part part one of the of the solution has led to taking all pressure of building a side business off and it led to a job offer with my friend larry uh our our friend now um who is a retired navy seal he was an officer in seal team three for 10 years and he teaches um how to uh create operate and sustain high functioning teams all right, I'm going to interrupt for a second. Yeah. You're now working with a Navy SEAL officer of 10 years. And 
is it fair to say that you were a middle manager before? Yeah, yeah, even lower than a middle middle manager. Yeah. So you went from middle manager to embedding rocks in your hand when you're doing adventures outdoors, and that's led to a Navy SEAL officer. What he proposed going to business together? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. He's he he came to you with the offer, not you went to him. Yeah, yeah. He he basically said, you know, how's the, how's this side hustle thing working for you? Why don't you just do that, but under my company, and propose something to me, and we'll work it out. I was like, oh, well, awesome. <laughs> and so, basically, now, um, in addition to helping manage his leadership courses. I'm managing adventure expeditions with this company and we're planning our first one for, uh, you know, late spring. So it didn't occur to me that you got out of, you didn't, you didn't want to start a company. You didn't want that risk. That I thought I did business stuff. I thought I did. I thought I had to, I thought I had Uh no other choice. And now I realized, man, this is going to solve the problem way better with a lot lower risk to me and my family. So why wouldn't I do this? So this is like Raphael's story in the beginning of the book where he, yep. he came to me because he wanted to leave a company and start a new one, but then he ended up getting responsibility for himself and, and mm-hmm. uh, deliverables and accountability and resources. And, but he didn't, he didn't have to rent an office, get a benefits package, uh, register with the state and all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. So you, got, you got to seal to do your dirty work. Yeah, which <laughs> he wanted to because he's my friend. And, oh. and he believes in this problem as much as I do, which is exactly the point of like, he, he believes in this so, so much too that, I mean, he's willing to put money behind it and put his reputation behind it. This thing that popped out of you doing the, the stuff in this paperback book. Yeah. And it was something that he wanted, wanted to do, but didn't have the capacity to do. And he was so grateful that I was willing to deploy my capacity to solve this problem with him that now he can, now he can do more adventure, which is something he wants anyway. Is this too good to be true? Almost. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we've talked about this before. So Larry um, uh, went to the Naval Academy with Leif Babin, who uh, those who are familiar with Jocko Willink, Jocko, Leif is the co-author and the uh, former Navy SEAL teammate of Jocko's who they wrote Extreme Ownership and a couple other books together. Leif took over Larry's SEAL platoon and they were in the Naval Academy together. So we're one step away from Jocko and actually I'm working on finding a uh, fruitful conversation using this method of, of reaching out to, to people from initiative of like, yeah, we can and should ask advice of Jocko about this adventure stuff because he's got some things that he can help us with and he's not a competitor. Um, in, and even if he was, he would still be able to give us advice and that would be okay. So I haven't had that conversation yet, but getting there. You're going from not even a middle manager to friends. You're already friends, but now tightening the relationship with the the Navy SEAL officer. And I'm going to add in something that I happen to know. It's like the whole family and you guys are are like, it's the wife and the kids. It's all seems to be like a package. Yeah. And, and so that connection is not just, you're not doing business together except as a subset of realizing dreams of yeah. yourselves and the people that you're serving. Yep. Absolutely. And like, that's not enough. Now we're going to go with this worldwide sensation of, I don't know how many Twitter or not Twitter, um, podcast followers he's got. I've certainly seen Jocko's Ted talk and it's like, that is not your average Ted talk. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just, you almost, you as a matter of course are like, yes, that's someone who will be in my life. Certainly. So uh, surely, uh, soon enough. And all I'm doing is the stuff in this book. Yeah. And it's, it's cool. Like, and it's so low pressure too of like, yeah, I don't need to put any pressure or timeline on it to, to do, to reach out to Jocko. It'll, it'll just happen when it needs to. And it will happen if I keep putting in the work. What's next? What, like, what, yeah, now what, what is to come? Do you know? (laughs) So the, the bit that I can tell you about, um, in, we're, we're trying to figure out timing exactly, but spring, summer, um, we're putting together a probably two and a half, three day adventure expedition for some clients that is going to involve Larry 
being Larry and doing some amazingly impactful teaching and, and experiences. And then we're also going to do some extremely dangerous driving, uh, either through the woods or on a drift track. We're trying to figure out locations based on budget and how many people are coming. But like, holy shit, I'm going to be able to do like learn how to drift or rally race or some sort of offensive driving or something or other with Larry and soon to be some of our best friends because most of our clients end up becoming really good friends just by the deep connections that we build. How awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if people may be watching this much later, can they contact you to do your next adventure? If oh, absolutely. Yeah, please. I mean, we would love to have you. Um, you could just email, actually, probably the best way would be to start following along uh, sealteamleaders.com, seal as in Navy SEALs or the aquatic mammal. Seal Team Leaders will get you into the, the mailing list and we get all the announcements for when uh, you know we have a landing page and, and communications coming out about the next adventure uh, expedition. So. Um, all of that will be there. Um, and also you can see you know, some of Larry's YouTube videos that he's got up that are, are really good about leadership and, and teams and things like that. Any reason not to do any contraindications, any unwanted side effects, any reason not to get the book? I mean, if you don't like doing, putting effort into something um, that you care about, um, if you don't want to change the world, if you, if you want to keep things exactly the way they are, don't buy this book <laughs> because you will change if you put in the work and, and, and in good ways. Um, but uh, you know, even if you fear change, you still should buy the book because that's something you should work on. <laughs> and anything I didn't think to ask or anything to, do you want to ask me or anything to bring up otherwise? Hmm. Yeah. I, um, I, well, I wanted to talk a, a bit about this relationship I built with Jeff um, in addition to Larry. So I already knew Larry um, and we've been working together together for a couple of years, but Jeff and I became a lot closer friends, Jeff Binaldi through this process um, because especially as I got into the numbers, I realized I needed to build some skills in putting together an adventure company and he already has an, a successful one. And he was really open and honest about like, some of the pitfalls that I was about to fall into and, and could avoid. And it turned into more than just, you know, getting advice from a mentor. It, it turned into like, Hey, this is, this is why I got into this. You know, I, I was having some, some real troubles and I was still working my way through them. And um, we, we formed a deeper friendship than just the advice that he was giving me on this initiative. Um, that now we're, you know, we text each other back and forth and ask how we're, how are things going, you know, not just with the initiative, but, you know, personally, and that, that means a lot. Yeah. Now I can't help but mention some things. People who follow me enough will know this about me, but I, the way that you're speaking about bringing adventure to, to Americans, to people of the world, to men, it's when I speak about the environment and acting on the environment, to me, it's like just as passionate. And the way that you're talking about Larry, it's like, I have the people who've been, I've had a Nobel Peace Prize winner, not only over for dinner at my place for my famous no packaging vegetable stew, but in the fall when there's lots of vegetables uh, and there's more than I can handle on my own, he's one of my go-to people to, he, he lives near me, nearby me. And I'm like, come on over, I got extra vegetables. And he, I got a Nobel Prize winner telling me about inside workings of the UN. That's really cool. And there's Navy SEALs, there's, the Marine Corps uh, general, there's the people at West Point who are leaders who, who I got an, um, an Olympic gold medalist and a CrossFit Games champion and winner of the Super Bowl and the three star, uh, sorry, the three time global managing director of McKinsey. And some of these people are contacts I've had on my podcast, but some are, are friends. Like, and like, I'm not going to go to them to borrow money, but I bet if I did, they'd be like, yeah, I know you, no problem. I'll, I'll be glad to help you out. And I had no idea that like, or rather it was, um, when I started, I didn't know what would happen, but I knew because this book is the culmination of years and years and decades of myself, both living it and teaching others. So that when I started my podcast, 
All I knew was that was a, a virtually zero cost, like tens of dollars to start something. And that would be all I would need. That was like the seed of, you know, the first couple of things in this book. Did I have to make a um, minimal viable product or to do all the Kanban stuff and all the Silicon Valley stuff? No, I didn't need that. That was, I mean, that's great if you're a Silicon Valley engineer and you got like your app is starting to go crazy and you want to market it. Even if you were, you should still do this instead. <laughs> like I, next door to us, the building next door to me here at, at I'm in my office at Purdue University. Um, the building next door, actually until last week, anyway, this place moved, moved buildings, but they're still next nearby. We have a, a startup incubator trying to get Purdue intellectual property out into the market. And that's the typical the entrepreneurship dog and pony show. We got a pitch competition and we got a networking event and we got a, you know, business plan competition and things like I'm still bringing this book to their Friday morning get together for coffee networking hour and showing it to people who are, you know, have started multiple companies and like, you should do this, you know, <laughs> cause it will help you not pull your hair out and, and, you know, keep important what's really important in life and not burn yourself the hell out creating this company that, you may not actually need to create if, you know, um, so, you know, seeing, seeing a lot of people lose their focus, you know, they lose the forest for the trees. Mm -hmm. They get swept up in the dog and pony show. Yeah. And yeah, it kills me when a lot of people, you, I see this in, in when I teach at NYU because NYU has all these contests and you see someone they have a project that they're going to love. It's going to help the world become, it's going to help people. And then they see this thing that's like $300,000 prize. And they're like, Oh, I got to make it like that. And then they're not serving the customer. They're not serving themselves. They're not living. They're just following. And that's the opposite of initiative. Yeah. And people are giving up on good ideas because they don't pass the dog and pony show criteria. You know, a, a, a friend of mine, that I mentor, he's a, he's a senior in um, mechanical engineering here at Purdue, smart kid, really driven, got great ideas. He, he built a team around a company he wanted to start because he was part of the dog and pony show. He, he wanted to, to make laser cutting, laser engraving easier and more accessible to people so that people could make things um, quicker and, and, and more um, economically and have some agency over their creativity without having to learn how to, you know, use CAD software and things like that. It was great. And because he, they didn't win the competition to get funding and, and, you know, getting swept up in school and, and other things, but mostly because they, they didn't get funding through the, the traditional dog and pony show, the, the idea died and the team disbanded. And it was a good idea worth doing. And he was the right person to lead it at the right time. And he gave up on it because he didn't have, the network, he didn't have the problem well uh, defined well enough. He probably, he could have tweaked his solution to be more marketable, you know, things that this would have helped. Um, and, and now he's, you know, just going to get an engineering degree, which is fine. And um, he's starting some other ideas, which are fine, but not solving his ultimate problem. Mm. And it's, it's kind of sad. Did you get him a copy of the book? I should. I mentioned it to him. I should just buy him one. Yeah. I should All this is secret list. I could get another book sale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I might have. Anyway, yeah. I'm going to check and see if he has one. Because I've mentioned it a bit, but he hasn't acted on it. I think we covered a lot. I really yeah. thought this was going to be a three-minute conversation. And now... <laughs> I think it's going to be some, whoever's listened all the way through is probably seriously thinking about getting this book uh, and hopefully doing the exercises and yeah. building for themselves in their life, what you have built for yourself in your life, what I've built for myself in my life and what all the people in the, in the book, how many, there's like a dozen stories in the book mm -hmm. and did they all relate to you? I mean, did you relate to them? Did they make sense in the context where they were? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some of them I, I resonated with more than others, but they all make sense. Anything, anything else to add or comment on or anything like that? Yeah, I think, I think that's it. Yeah. It was, 
it's it's weird where you know some books still take you like there's there's i think three or four like this in my life that are like i did the work it really changed me and everyone needs to read it and this is one of those let's leave it right there dan zander thank you very much <laughs> thanks josh are you recording